probably, maybe more than that. Isaiah 38, verse 1. And uh, this was what God told uh, the prophet, or the, the man, Hezekiah, excuse me. And uh, I want to use it for all of us tonight. Verse 1, in those days was Hezekiah sick unto death, about ready to die. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord. And, and then he goes into that thing, y'all know that story of Hezekiah, where God added to him 15 years for turning down. I, I want to back up and use that, what Isaiah said to him, for us tonight. Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. That would be my thought tonight. God's order for our home. God's order for our home. That's the, our homes. Uh, that's the title of the message tonight. And the, the Lord told him here, he said, uh, look buddy, uh, get your house in order. Because you're going to face me one of these days. It, it'd be the equivalent of what we say now, you better get your ducks in a row. You know, people say, uh, you better get your, uh, the, old, the old old spiritual song where you, you, you better get your business right. You know, uh, the Lord's coming, you better get your business right. That means you get everything in place, get your bills paid, get everything right, make plans, get it right. Now, that's the way to live. You ought to live your life every day like, it could be your last one, right? Listen to it. Come in. Stay with me now. Listen. Every day we ought to live our life. Why is the last Because we never know when that last one is coming, but it is coming. And so tonight I want to talk about our homes. Uh, it has been rightfully said that our churches are only as strong as our homes. That is true. Uh, you, you can't have a, a bunch of hell at home and come and expect heaven at church. You cannot fuss and fight and talk bad and everything else at home and then suddenly come into church and expect God to pour out His blessing. Our church is a reflection of all of our homes collectively that make up the body of Christ that meets here at Shining Light Baptist Church. So tonight, I'm going to talk about that. We need to get our homes in order. If I, uh, if I'm a, if I live one way at home and come to church and, and put on an act, basically, people can tell it. They may not say he's faking, but they can tell something ain't right. It's flat. It's flat. The preaching will be flat. The singing will be flat. The teaching will be flat. It's just flat and dull and dry. And I'm convinced tonight if everybody in the church would live our life like the Bible said for us to do, all of us, me, all of us here tonight, uh, the preacher is not excluded. We're all included. We all, if every one of us would pray and live right and serve God and hate sin and put the Lord first, there's no telling what would happen when we all meet together and start preaching and praying. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit for a few minutes. Very briefly, you listen to me. I'll talk first of all about husbands, the man of the house. Since you like to be called man of the house so much, it's time for you being to man up and be the man of the house. Amen. That's right, brother. Uh, when you are the man, when, you, when it says man of the house, what that means is anybody who's living under your roof. If cousin so and so has uh, left uh, him and his wife separated, and he comes to live under your roof, you are to be over cousin so and so. If Aunt Susie uh, moves down here from up north and is staying with you, Aunt Susie is under your roof. You are the man of the house. You are the king of your individual castle, and you are the man of that house. And you will answer to God what goes on or does not go on under the roof of your house. A lot of times men like to brag and say, bless God, I'm the man of the house. Well, if you are, then man up and be a real man. Man up and be a spiritual man. Man up and be a, a man who leads his family right and sets the example. Don't be a man that lays in the bed on Sunday morning and your wife has to come in there and say, honey, you better get up at 15 minutes. Honey, you better get up. God have mercy.
mercy. Uh, get your sorry hide out of bed and get up and get ready. It ought to be the man that gets up first and says, all right, everybody up. We're going to the house of God. My girls, uh, 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 my daughters, you, you mark it uh, about 90, 90 out of 100 times, they all three get a text every Sunday morning. Get up. Time to go to church. Uh, let's go. Ask them. The two of them sitting there uh, every Sunday morning. Uh, let's go. And they're grown married. And I still fuss at them to get up. If there's anything I can't stand, it's people that lay in the bed and won't get out of bed. Why? Fifteen more minutes ain't going to help you. Good night. I mean, go to bed, you lazy thing, and get out of bed. Get ready and get over to the house of God where you're supposed to be. And I'm holding back very much of what I feel right now. I'm going to be as nice as I can, uh, but a man ought to get up. I'm, God have mercy on these homes where the women, woman has to be the spiritual background, backbone and pay the tithe and hide it from him. And, not, and he, can't even, he, too, he ain't even a man enough to even get his finances right with God. And she has to get the children ready. And, and she has to keep it down. Let's don't make daddy mad. Let's don't make daddy mad. Daddy, you know how daddy gets you? Let everybody else, shh, daddy. God, Lord have mercy I'm telling you I'd hate if I was a woman I'd hate to be married to some little cry baby like that listen get up get up get up get up get yourself out of bed amen I get a woman to come to church one time and uh, she had on a ring about that big and the lady said oh my goodness that's the most beautiful ring I've ever seen she said that's the famous Johnson diamond and it comes with a curse they said what's the curse she said Mr. Johnson <laughs> uh, that's right. That ought to be the way it is. Some people ain't that right? I'm telling you tonight, uh, uh, a man ought to be the man. Amen. Like the little boy, they said he comes to Sunday school. Come to Sunday school on Sunday morning. And the uh, teacher said, I'm glad to see you in Sunday school, honey. I'm so glad you came to Sunday school. And uh, he said, thank you, thank you. He said, I really wanted to go fishing. And daddy made me come to Sunday school. She said, that's good, honey. Your daddy did good. Man. She said, yeah, they said there wasn't enough seats in the boat for me. Him and his buddy was going fishing. Now, there's a man like that with that kind of attitude, that kind of philosophy, will answer to God. Uh, how many of you have heard of the famous Goodman family, the Happy Goodmans? Raise your hand. All us old people in here remember the Happy Goodmans. I, when I grew up, before I ever, ever say, my mom would listen to them, and they'd, they'd come in there on Sunday morning, and they'd say, Jubilee. Jubilee, you're invited to this happy jubilee. And I remember that one, I thought, that is the most terrible music I've ever heard in my life. I'd cover my head up. It's every Sunday morning, Mom, have the TV on. That's the only time you could get gospel on back then was on Sunday morning. And, uh, and, I, remember them, and I remember them singing. When I got saved, I started liking them. And I remember old Bestel Goodman, Lord have mercy, buddy. I, she'd rear back, get that microphone. She had that big Church of God beehive hornet's nest hairdo sticking way up there. You know, they don't believe in cutting it, but you put it all up here and you can still see their ears like it's short and weird. But uh, uh, they, uh, they, it's sticking way up out there like that. And uh, she's going, uh, looking for a city. And you thought that's high she could go, looking for a city. And then looking on, on up, she'd hit the roof, buddy. And the power of God, old Rusty, and all of them, they're all about all dead and gone now, I reckon. Uh, but the Happy Goodmans was a way of life for, uh, for country Christians coming up all for the last 40 years. Let me tell you a story about them. Their daddy, Mr. Goodman, their daddy, down in Alabama, built a log cabin out in the country. He had a huge family, and every Sunday morning, Mr. Goodman got his family up, walked five miles to Sunday school. Some of y'all can't make it at 10, I know that. It's just too hard. At five miles. That is from here, 170, 172. That's almost from here to exit 100, almost. Walking on a country road with all them kids and come all the way over here, stay in Sunday school, then preaching, brought a packed lunch, had a little picnic, stayed all day long. So the evening service walked five miles back home and didn't even go home on Sunday afternoon. And that's what 
produced the Goodman family. You know what that was? There was a man who said, my family is my responsibility. It's my family, and God gave them to me, and by the grace of God, I'm going to see my families in the house of God on Sunday. How long does it take to walk five miles? Hour and a half? I'm guessing. I don't know. I can run. Let's see. You run 10, 10, 5. It, it take. You, can, you walk a mile in 15 minutes? Okay. Here we go to Sunday school. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's how they did. I don't know. But I'd say at least, at least an hour and a half. Probably two hours. Bunch of kids. Bunch of kids. Wife. Walking. They'd say that's child abuse in our, our generation. I tell you what's child abuse, letting kids stay up at night on the Internet when you don't know what they're looking at. Hey, you ought to lose custody of them if you ain't got no more sense than to let a kid have unfiltered, un- unsupervised access to, the, access to the Internet. Amen. That's right, brother. I'm telling you tonight, uh, you know what he done? Them old men, them kids didn't go anywhere. When their girls went somewhere, Daddy called them in and said, let me look at that dress you got on. Daddy did. You know why? It ain't no, no good for mama. Mama said, that is so cute. You're cute. Because mama is a girl too. Let daddy inspect them girls' clothes. You know why? Because he's an old wicked man like the rest of us. You ain't going out there looking like that. You know why? He knows exactly what them boys out there thinking. Same the other way around with the boy. Daddy, daddy said, oh, she's pretty, man. You ought to like her. Mama said, no, you stay away from that little floose right there. A woman knows other women, don't they? Man, women know women, buddy. I'm telling you, that woman knows another one. I've, I've, had, I've been wrong a thousand times. They'd tell me, they said, Brother Danny, you better watch that one right there. And I'd say, no, now, you're, you're, you're just jealous because she's prettier than you. And no, no, you better watch. Couldn't find out that was right. She was a flute. Uh, but you listen, uh, let, let, let mama help the boys and daddy help the girls and be the man of the house. And ladies and gentlemen, you better... No, you ain't going nowhere in that. Go back and change. How about that, Daddy? Well, I don't feel like it's my right. Sure, it's your right. You're paying the bills. You're feeding them food. You got a roof over their head. Well, my, I don't think my girls ever did this. But no, I never went to their room and said, no adult parents keep out. What are you talking about keep out? It's my house. I live here. A man, listen to this, here's some great philosophy. A man marries a woman thinking she won't change. She'll always look like this. Guess what? She does. She changes. You better watch that hourglass figure. Time goes by, old sand in the bottom. (laughs) Tell them why I said that. Just all over the world right now. A man marries a woman thinking that she won't change. She does. A woman marries a man thinking he will change. He don't. If he does anything, he gets worse. They say, well, if I could just get him to marry, I'll get him to do this. And no, no, yeah, you'll get him, you'll get him to do less than what he's doing right now. If he's sorry when you're dating, he's going to be way sorry when you get married. If he goes to church just Sunday morning when you're dating, he'll go every other Sunday when you get married. A man marries a woman thinking she'll never change, and she does. <whistles> does she ever? And and uh, and a man, a woman marries a man thinking uh, I can change him. He ain't. He's gonna get worse. I'm telling you. I got one guy. They said he's so ugly when he was born. His mom, his doctor spanked his mama. <laughs> That's all for <laughs> That he's so done, they bought him at a yard sale for half off. That's right. Uh, he was so skinny, he only had one stripe on his pajama. He had to run around in the shower to get wet, brother. Uh, and she thinks he's such a, a stud and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, brother, listen, I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, man of the house ought to get up, work, fail. And, and by the way, you can call me old fashioned, I believe it's biblical. 
primarily it is the man's job to make the living, pay the bills, make sure everything's took care of. But primarily, I'm not saying it's wrong for the woman to help. I understand the day we're living in, you just about need two incomes because you have to have all this stuff. Uh, but I'm telling you, it is the man's responsibility to provide for his family. Amen. All right. Let's talk about the wife, the woman of the house. Years ago, your favorite three words were, I love you. Now your favorite three words are, let's eat out. <laughs> Amen. Listen, if you gripes complain about the Bible being sexist, tell you what you ought to do, honey. Go live in a country where there ain't no Bible. You think, you think the Bible's hard on women? Listen, the Bible exalts womanhood to its highest possible thing. A man that's right with God will treat his wife right and like a queen. Amen? Like, like he should. And if he's right with God, if you ain't right with God, you mean to him. That's right. And, uh, and, and ladies and gentlemen, if you're a woman here tonight, your, your job is to say, hey, I am the woman of the house. My job is to keep the house like the Bible said. Call it sexist, whatever you want to. You're showing your ignorance. That's what the Bible said. Keep the home, raise the children, honor the husband, serve God, live right. That don't mean the husband's above you. Quit crying. That don't mean he's better than you are. Quit you whining. That means God gave us different positions. God don't love the sun no more than the moon. He gave one this job and one that job. And it doesn't mean he's discriminating against you. It means, listen, ladies and gentlemen, you need to make up your mind. You're going to serve God. You're going to do right. You're going to honor the Lord. You're going to do what God wants you to do. You're going to say, I'm going to be the very best wife that I can be. I'm going to be the very best mother that I can be I, her, her hands work according to Proverbs 31 her, the heart of her husband safely trusts in her she honors him all the days of his life ladies and gentlemen the woman of the house has a great ministry a great ministry not hateful not hateful to him all evening and then as soon as the phone rings one of your friends you suddenly get all friendly And so, oh, hey, how are you? Yeah, well, nothing. I got plenty of time. What's on your mind? Like that. It's called a uh, hypocrite. Amen. But then don't drive him crazy either. Men and women are so different. I can't even... I can't imagine somebody saying men and women are the same. You've got to be the dumbest person I've ever met in my life. You have no experience at all. We're made different. We think different. We feel different. God made us that way. Thank God he did. I'd hate for my wife to be like a man. Shoot. That'd be horrible. Horrible. I want to be like a woman. With the opposite size of the coin. Amen? That's the way it's supposed to be. But now see, they say, I, don't, I might not have these numbers exactly right, but they say a woman, a man, speaks like ten to 15,000 words per day on average. At work all day long, talk, 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 talk. That's a lot. The average female speaks 25,000 words a day. True, I'm not trying to be funny or cute or nothing. That's fact. It's, it's a proven fact. Ask any man in here today, how was your day? So when I go home tonight, somebody says, how was your day? I said, good. Great. Had a good time. He comes home from work. She says, how was your day, honey? All right. Anything special happened? Nah. He might have had all kinds of stuff go wrong that day. No big deal. Ask her how her day was. Well, I got up this morning, the first thing I noticed, it was a, and it was raining, and I left a sunroof open in the car, and I, and I was supposed to pick up Mom at 4 o'clock, and we were going to the doctor, and then they canceled the doctor's appointment. Whoa, 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 whoa! I didn't ask you life history. I just asked, how's your day? And you, you can't eat supper, take a shower. Uh, they're not just tell you every little old blessed uh, detail. I mean, and that's not wrong. They're made, God made them that way. Like a fellow said, 
He said, my wife speaks 140 words a minute with gusts of up to 180. <laughs> and, and that's not wrong. I'm not fussing at you. I'm just saying, leave the poor guy alone. He wants a little peace and quiet. Just talk his head off. I said, uh, there's one guy. He never would go to church, never would go to church. And the preacher went over visiting him one time. He said, man, why don't you go to church? He said, preacher, I'm going to be honest with you. He said, my wife, she said, she drives me crazy. He said, honest to goodness, as soon as I walk in, it's fussing about this and fussing about that. And uh, go ahead and walk out, bless God. I'll preach harder next Sunday. <laughs> Can't take preaching, can you? Uh, uh, blame it on Frankster. I'd be ashamed. No. But anyway, what, what was I talking about before I was so rudely disrespected and interrupted there? Oh, yeah, the guy wouldn't come to church, and the preacher went to visit him. He said, Preacher, I'll just be honest with you. He said, She drives me crazy. He said, he said, he said Honestly, the only peace and quiet I get is when she's at church. <laughs> he said, I'm not about to mess that up. I ain't coming. That's sad, isn't it? That's sad. The woman, the woman of the house. Amen. Pray. I tell you what to do, ladies. Give you a suggestion. Pray a wall around your kids. Pray a wall around. Get on your knees every morning and say, Dear God, build a wall around my kids. The devil's after your kids day and night. He's right now plotting. Right now. Right now. Satan is plotting to ruin every one of these teenagers and young people in here tonight. He'd make drug addicts out of every one of them and not in life. Of them. He'd make crackheads and, and prostitutes and drug dealers out of every teenager in this church, uh, yours and mine included. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies, hit your knees. Be a prayer warrior. There's something about a Holy Ghost filled woman's prayers that God just will not refuse. Build a wall of prayer around your husband and your family. God will bless you for it. And I want to talk about the kids. Honor, respect, and obey your parents. You're not right with God if you're being a brat to your parents. Don't come and say, I'm going to, Brother Danny, I'm going to give a testimony, or Brother Danny, the, the Lord done this for me at camp. Praise the Lord. I'm right with God. When you talk disrespectful to your parents. Your parents are in the place of God. I didn't say there's God. I said they're in the place of God. When you're real little, little, little babies like Franks are there, uh, little, little, little kids, they are learned to learn by authority. They do what their parents say. They do what their parents say. As a kid gets older, that transfers right over to the Lord. It sure does. So all you kids here tonight that live at home with your parents, you know, let, me, let me tell you something. You don't know everything. And you don't know more than your mom and dad. Just because you live in this little hip-hop generation of trendy little spoiled brats does not mean your mom and daddy grew up with dinosaurs and don't know what they're talking about. Your mom and daddy knows exactly what they're saying. And most of the time, even lost people have the right advice for their kids. Most of the time. Kids understand that. Well, kids nowadays said, Mama, little kid come home one day and said, Mama, Mama, the preacher, I didn't like what happened at church. She said, What? She said, The preacher said, Honey, I'm going to be praying for you that you'll go, we'll be raised in a good Christian home. And I said, Heck, I'm going to stay with you guys. <laughs> that boy knows. That boy knows his home wasn't what it's supposed to be. Two boys one time is fussing, and is fussing over pancakes. And one of them wants a pancake, the other one wants a pancake. No, I want it. No, I want it. And they said, now, son, mama said, son, now, Jesus wouldn't do that. Jesus would say, I will give my brother the pancake if he was here. And the boy said, okay, all right, let's go. Uh, right, you be Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get the pancakes. And, and that's the way kids are. Kids are just that way. Amen? 
That's like, I like that. I like that. Amen. I had a little kid down and praying one time. I always amazed at little kids. Little kids just fascinate me, the things they say. Like Marty saying, uh, 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 he punched me to victory. He punched me to victory beneath the cleansing. And I, I, I get a kick out of that. One of the kids was uh, praying one time. And he was down praying. And he's saying, and Lord, forgive us our trash baskets as we forgive those that trash basket and our basket. And that's true. That's true. That's true. Lord, get rid of all that trash in our life. Amen. Get it all out. Boys and girls, listen. You're only young once, and it ain't very long. You're going to grow up real soon. You don't have to please them bunch of nuts at school. Don't you let them make you cuss. Don't you let them make you drink. Don't you let them cause you to smoke weed. Don't do it. Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Say, my mom and daddy raised me right. You people do whatever you want to. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to do right. Every young person in this church, make up your mind tonight. By the grace of God, I'm going to live right and do my parents right and God right. Amen. Lord bless you for that. The kids. I remember growing up. My daddy wasn't saved. Mom was, daddy wasn't, and it made it very hard. And it was only by the grace of God, buddy. The Lord won out. He won out, won the victory in our home. Thank God. And I believe it's because mom, mom, the way mom was, my mom was extremely spiritual person. She looked at everything through spiritual lens. I guess I, I got that from her, I reckon. I, and I got the crazy part of them from daddy. And I'm both of them. And I have to watch the bad part and feed the good part. And you do too. All the good traits you got from your parents, fight, fight them down. And all their, or the good part, you feed them. And all the bad traits, fight them and beat them down. Like spray Roundup on them all the time. Holy Ghost Roundup, keep them down. Because they're in you. You ever caught yourself doing something and say, that's my daddy coming out. You ever, and, and it's good or bad. If it's good, say, praise God, I'm going to use it. If it's bad, like if you had a bad temper or if you had a, a tendency to do other stuff that's wrong, fight it. And I remember growing up, when, I, when we played in a band, we had band practice downstairs in our basement. And my mom, oh, she hated it. And we'd, we had guitars and amplifiers like this set up, and I mean we was jamming out down there. Like I was singing this morning when I was running. And I mean, I'd, na, 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 na. <laughs> you know, there I go again. Well, they, and uh, I remember us playing that music down there, and Mom saying, that ain't right, Daddy be drinking. We used to play for gigs. They call it a gig. That means you got an opportunity to play somewhere. And we'd play at the, at the Moose Lodge over in Nebo. What 13-year-old kids business playing music at the Moose Lodge is beyond me. We should have never even been allowed in that place. Some wicked devil allowed that to happen. Daddy probably talked to somebody or something. I don't know how. I didn't pay no attention to it then. We played the Moose Lodge and the Lake Club in Marion. And I'd seen people drinking and staggering. I was like 13. The other guys in the band was 17. And, and, you know, and so they was, it, it scared me because I'd seen Daddy drunk and, I, and, and we put all our equipment in the back of Daddy's truck. And I remember coming around old number 10 over there. And it was 12, what, 12 o'clock at night and we was going home and, and Daddy's head started dropping off like this. And I reached over and grabbed the steering wheel. I was going to wreck. And so that put a fear in me of alcohol. And because of that, I never drank. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. It wasn't because I was good. It's because I was scared. It wouldn't hurt some of y'all to be a little scared. It ain't cute. You say, well, my friends go out and they get drunk. Your friends are idiots. You hear me? They're idiots. The Bible said they're not wise. That's what the Bible said. Your friends don't know what they're doing. Listen, you boys, be a man. Listen, don't be no sissy. Dress like a man. Do you, do you notice I ain't got on no jewelry? Now, I was having a wedding band. I got two of them. My knuckles busted up from playing basketball so big I couldn't get it off and on. That's the only jewelry I'd wear is a wedding band. 
I am a boy. Lord, it's getting quiet in here. I'm a man. Why would a man want to look like a girl? When I first, the first time, don't get mad at me, the first time I ever saw a man with an earring, I said, what in the world? Are you a guy? To, to this day, it looks weird to me. It looks weird to me. Oh, you're just old-fashioned. Thank God I am. A boy with jewelry in his nose. Yeah. Oh, Lord have mercy. A boy. Now let's get quiet. No, don't get mad at me. I'm saying husbands have a right job. Wives have a job. You say, well, my, my mama won't let me do all that. Thank God for your mama. Thank God for your daddy. Listen, we're living in a, a gender blender age, brother, when they're trying to blur the lines where you can't tell male from female. You better keep them separate. Amen. Boys be boys and girls be girls. God made you a boy, be a boy, be a man. Get your fingernails dirty. Get out in the mud and play. Amen. Snakes and snails and puppy dog tails. <laughs> Amen. The girl, be pretty. Try your best. <laughs> I'll be praying for you. You know, them little girls don't. Trinity and Marty's putting on makeup. And I said, y'all don't need no makeup. They was in there just rubbing. They had it all, big red stuff all over their jaws and everything. And I said, now, if Frank does that, we're going to have a talk. <laughs> ain't going gonna, ain't gonna to do that. Ain't going to do that. Now, you know what the world would call me? Oh, you're just, you're sexist. Well, you know what you are? You're crazy. That's what you are. You're crazy. Call me whatever you want to, buddy. Your generation lost their mind. Amen. Good night, people. I was in a, you know, little girls, they don't need makeup. You, but the older you get, you, you know. It, for, after a while, you got to get you a trowel, man. Fill in them ditches. Get like a... <laughs> Them ditches is deep. You got to smear it. <laughs> and, and, and I ain't fussing at you. Neither, I ain't fussing at all. You, I, you think it's hard to look at me for 30 minutes? Look what I got to look at. Some of y'all hard on the eyes, man. Uh, but listen, do the best you can. But a man be a man, woman be a woman. <laughs> Good night. I don't know where all that stuff come from. I remember one time, my sister was doing her homework, my perfect sister, Debbie, who's never done anything wrong. I hated her because I was always in trouble. Me and my oldest sister was in trouble all the time. Debbie never did nothing wrong. But when it comes to church, a lot, she was sitting with her back to me, and our rooms were in the basement where our band practice. That's where our bedroom was. And I was fooling around over there one time. I was about 12 or 13 and had a cherry bomb, a, a big one. You know, a big one blow your finger off. And what makes a kid do stuff like that? I have no idea. I was just taking a lighter and I was just flipping, putting that on that fire, putting it on that fire. You know, why do you do stuff like that? Kids are so stupid, ain't they? Why, I, I just kept putting it on that fire and it went, shh. And I didn't like that and it got down to about that much and I just threw it. And right between, like she was sitting right there, right between me and her, it went off in midair. Right here. It went. Boo! It sounded like you shot a shotgun in our basement. Smoke went everywhere. Mom come to the top of the stairs. Watch out! Ah! Boy and daddy found out. They said, you know, you could have you hurt your sister bad. You idiot. What's wrong with you? What makes you young boys so dumb like that? I don't know. I they do dumb stuff. I could give you story after story after story. At camp, they at camp they had these guys and they'd torch them and put some, just stink bombs and, and throw them in the shower when the guy's in there in the shower. And close, the door, close the door. He'd about kill you, man. You're not naked. You can't run out. And you, you can't breathe. Little old bitty bathroom about that. It's 100 degrees. And it, you can't breathe. I said, boys, y'all going to hurt somebody bad one of these days. They put lighter fluid on the door, wrote somebody's name or set it on fire at camp. Dumb 
stuff like that. It's like, that's not funny. You get somebody hurt real bad, that's not funny. So a kid needs to say, look, I'm going to not act my age. <laughs> I'm going to try to honor my parents and do right and serve God. Amen? All right. That's God's order for our home. Husbands, be a man. Wife, be a woman of God. Kids, honor your father and mother and do right. Lord bless you for it. Let's stand. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed tonight. Nobody's talking. If you want to just slide right out of your seat here this evening, slip out, come down here and pray, that'd be just fine. And Lord, I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better wife. Maybe some of y'all owe your wife an apology. Maybe some of you wives owe your husband an apology saying, look, I'm sorry for what I did. And maybe you owe your parents an apology. I don't know. Be man enough, woman enough, boy, girl enough to do what you're supposed to. Heavenly Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you'd help us all to love you, to serve you. Lord, to honor you in our homes. We know that Shining Light Baptist Church will be no stronger than our homes that make it up. And so I pray in Jesus' name that you would bless every home here tonight. Honor our home. And we'll honor you, Lord. Help me to be a better daddy, a better husband, a better Christian, a better man, a better preacher, a better pastor, a better witness, a better soul winner, a better church member. Lord, help me, help me, for I've failed you many times. God, do what ought to be done in our lives. I pray that during this special Christmas season that everybody here will be blessed and that you would honor uh, they would honor you and put you first and we'll thank you for it we love you God have you in our hearts help us to be a soul winner for you this Christmas season may souls be saved Lord I pray that you'd send revival in every home in our churches in our country and world in Jesus name we pray and for his sake Amen so I'm still praying tonight wait just Seconds.